Well, hey boys and girls, we're here on the June 2012 Regents exam, and we're on page 15, starting with questions 81 through 85. And this has got a little story to tell. Once upon a time, two experiments running simultaneously at the Fermi National Accelerator Lab in Batavia, Illinois, have observed a new particle called a cascade baryon. That's interesting. One of the most massive examples yet of a baryon, a class of particles made of three quarks held together, blah, 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 blah. Um, held together by strong forces, three quarks. And it contains one quark from each of the three known families or generations of elementary particles called quarks. Protons and neutrons, as you all recall, are made up of an up and down quark. The first two generation quarks. Well, before I go any further, I'm going to look that up. Because I remember something about quarks on my formula sheet. And here we go. Here's the uh, particles of the standard particle, of the model. And there's my up and my down quarks. And a positive two-thirds and negative one-third. And you might recall that a proton is two ups and a down. Positive two-thirds, positive two-thirds for four-thirds, minus a third for three-thirds for a charge of positive one. The uh, neutron is a uh, up quark, positive two-thirds, and two down quarks, minus a third and minus a third for a total of zero-thirds or a charge of zero. But we're told that this thing contains, uh, what does it say, one from each of the generations um, various make first long as the down quark combines strange and a bottom quark. So we've got a, a strange quark and a bottom quark combined with uh, that uh, while well, the top and bottom various make up the third physical long as that a down quark could combine with a strange and a bottom quark to form the three generation cascade baryon. So this cascade baryon has a down quark, a strange quark, and a bottom quark. See, I got no idea what any of this means, but I can figure it out because uh, these words kind of match up with these words. They could be in French, and I could still do it to very well. On June 13th, the scientists running one of the two detectors, Fermi Labs, uh, announced they detected characteristics showing particles in the decay of cascade baryons. They formed the proton antiproton collision and lived no more than a trillionth of a second. Well, life is short. A week later, physicists at CDF uh, detected uh, their own baryon. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't do it first. All right, let's see what questions they're going to possibly ask about this thing. What combination of three quarks will produce a neutron? Well, wait a minute. Neutron, uh, that's zero charge. And so that's, uh, oh yeah, we just, we just talked about that. That's the uh, up and two downs. Positive two-thirds, minus a third, minus a third. So the answer for this would be up, down, down. I, I think that would be... Uh, I guess if I started with a capital letter, that would even be a complete sentence, because I put a period at the end. So an up and a down and a down. What combination of three quarks produce a neutron? That looks like an answer. What is the magnitude and sign of the charge in elementary charges of a cascade baryon? Well, that was uh, that's a good thing we wrote all these down. The cascade baryon is a down, a strange, and a bottom. So let's see, I've got a minus a third, minus a third, and minus a third for a total charge of minus three thirds or minus one. This cascade baryon is going to have a charge and magnitude of minus one third elementary charge, or minus one, minus three thirds or minus one. And there it goes. And let's see, uh, three. 
The teratron derives its name from a tera electron volt, the maximum energy it can impart to a particle. Derive the energy in joules equivalent to one tera electron volt. <sighs> well, all right. First of all, what's this tera thing? Well, on the front of my formula sheet, I've got my powers of 10. So I've got a tera is uh, 10 to the 12. So that is 1 times 10 to the 12 electron volts. Now I want to somehow convert electron volts to joules. There's got to be a way to do that. And as it turns out, also on our formula sheet, uh, there's this electron volt thing here is equal to uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So on my answer sheet, it's only a point, but i got to do some work. First thing I'm going to do is write my total charge that I have available. And that's 1 times 10 to the 12 uh, electron volts, EVs. Okay. And now I know that I have 1 EV is the same as 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And that becomes my conversion factor. Now I can write that two ways. I can also write it 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is the same thing as 1 electron volts. And this helps me determine whether I multiply or divide. Now I've got electron volts to begin with. I want to be left with joules, so I need a conversion factor that has electron volts on the bottom. And so this one works. So now I multiply the numbers on the top and divide by the numbers on the bottom. I don't have any numbers on the bottom, so I just multiply. So it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 1 times 10 to the 12. Well, I could do it on my head, but uh, let's get the calculator. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. 1 EE 12 times 1.6 EE negative 19, and I think I'm going to be looking for an answer about negative uh, 7. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7, but let me hit enter and see what I get. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7. So that's going to be my answer in joules, and it's for a single point, yep. So I don't have to show any of that. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7 joules. Now let's look at this. Calculate the maximum total mass in kilograms of particles that can be created in head-on collisions with proton and antiproton, each having an energy of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7 joules. Look at that. They give you the answer to 83 in 84. <laughs> Show all work, including equations, substitution with units. Well, let's see what I've got. I've got an energy equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7 joules. I'm looking for mass, and I need an equation that deals with energy and mass, and there's Uncle Al, E equals mc squared. So what's C again? Speed of light. Speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Uh, joule is uh, uh, Newton meters. Newton is kilogram meters per second squared. So it, uh, if I were to work all of my units out, I would find uh, I would be left with kilograms. Uh, so let's plug in. First thing i got to do is my algebra. E equals mc squared, then E divided by c squared is equal to m. So I'm going to take 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7 joules divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then put that in parentheses and square it so I don't forget to square both the number and the unit. And so uh, now it's a matter of uh, plugging into your uh, formula. And you'll notice I still have my 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7 on my calculator screen. Uh, 
so I'm just going to type in divided by and I'm going to say parenthesis 3 e e 8 squared and parentheses and I'm getting 1.7 times 10 to the negative 24 and that should be kilograms so my mass should be 1 there it goes 1.7 times 10 to the negative 24 kilograms and what does it ask for? Mass for total mass in kilograms and uh, gives me the energy and I have one equation that talks about energy and mass. So it looks like I'm done with page 15.